Welp. The FCS quarterfinals are set. All eight seeded teams are going to the quarterfinals for the first time since, what, 2018? Also, Jackson State beat the brakes off of Southern, but again, we all expect that. And it'll be Jackson State versus NC Central in the Celebration Bowl. Ex I expected that. I expected that. That's why I didn't say anything about it. The news, anyway, you know, was about Dion leaving Jackson State to go to Colorado. Again, I've talked about it. It's a good thing. He's going to take, he's probably going to take his son with him. He's probably going to take Travis Hunter as well. They're going to, those three definitely are going to go. You. Anybody else I can think of, like Aubrey Miller, I don't know if he's going to stay. You know, he might stay. He might be, I don't I forgot what year he is in, um, is, I forgot what year he is, I, I think he might either. It's like a junior or a C or something, I forgot off the top of my head. But he's going to, but Dion is going to bring a lot of talent to Colorado with him and try to bring Colorado back from the dead. Um, I know this is an FCS video, but you know, the way I've been seeing it for years and years now with the whole HBCU FCS landscape is that personally I, not only as an African American, you know, I, I see the tradition and I see the culture in the HBCU diaspora. I see all that. It matters, but not to the extent that it matters, you know, as far as, you know, like the marching bands and stuff, all that stuff's good. All that stuff is fantabulous and all, but me personally, I'm a football person, first and foremost, and I gotta say, some conferences are just built different. They're built better than others. At conferences like the SWAC and the MEAC, I don't know. They gotta prove it on the field, just like you know the Group of Five. They gotta prove it on the field, like like the other smaller conferences that have auto bids, like the Pioneer League or the Patriot League. They gotta prove it on the field. And I've said this for years: schedule better. Don't schedule D2s. Don't schedule FBS teams. Play more FCS teams. Beat those FCS teams. The culture is starting to settle in that, A, hey, we can get those guys that can go to Power 5 conferences. You know, we can get those guys that, we can flip those guys from Florida States, and the, the Texases and the Alabamas of the world. We can flip those guys, bring them on over here. What can we do? to continue, you know, that sort of thing. That's that's the type of trend that Dion, you know, is leaving Jackson State with. You know, attendance is not going to change. Like, a, like the FCS is still going to be led by the SWAC. And keep in mind, those numbers are not propped up by home games. SWAC teams don't play home games. Not, almost, you know, there's very few that play like four or five home games. The rest play at neutral sites. Those are neutral sites propping those games up. Those are not home games. Neutral sites. Uh, you know, they like, you know, people in the, again, in the HBCU Sports Diaspora. It's, you know, they like, they like to talk about attendance. You know. And I, I, I counter with, these are not games at the actual stadiums of these teams. These are at NFL stadiums, usually. You know, unless it's like Jackson State, where, you know, they always get a big crowd. They get, like, the biggest crowd in the FCS regardless. Because there's nothing to do with Jackson, Mississippi. But anyway, that's my thoughts on that, for the most part. Dion left something that the HBCUs in the FCS can build off of and try to use to and again it's not just NIL that's impacting everybody it's NIL that can help the HBCUs out but in any case let's go over the FCS second round as Holy Cross first off they beat 
New Hampshire, Matthew Sluka and Peter Oliver combined for five touchdowns in this game. And again, New Hampshire just, you know, there was a weird safety in this game, but at the end of the day, it was just too much for the Wildcats, just too much of that Crusader attack. William and Mary, on the other hand, they beat the brakes off of Gardner Webb. They, they, they smothered them. Six turnovers in this game by the running Bulldogs. You know, like they, it was unfortunate. You know, four picks. Um, Ty Freeland picked off two of those, you know, passes at the tribe. They, 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 they scored. They scored in bunches, 38 points off the turnovers. You know, they, they had great offensive balance, over 600 yards, 300 passing, 300 rushing, and now it's going to be William and & Mary and Montana State. You know, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about, you know, Montana State in a moment. Furman and Incarnate Word had a shootout in which Lindsey Scott Jr. had, you know, five touchdowns in this game. And, I mean, he, he, again, just an exciting player to watch. You know, at the end of the day, you know, Furman could not, you know, he could not score with enough time remaining. And thus, UIW moves on. I mean, my goodness, man, this was this was a clinic, and it's gonna be them going up against Sacramento State. So GJ King, he'll be he'll be coaching with the cards, you know, for a little bit longer. He'll be coaching a little bit longer. Meanwhile, South Dakota State they beat the brakes off of Delaware. I mean, they you know Ryan O'Connor got hit hard, so he left the game. Uh, but he's, but he, I believe he's okay. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's also, you know, um, Noah Henderson, who also couldn't play, you know, at one point. Uh, but then Isaiah Davis, you know, just went off two touchdowns over 100 yards rushing, you know, in this game. And I mean, the Blue Hens couldn't get anything on third down. They were only, what, 33% on third downs? Not a good look there. So, again, South Dakota State going to be taking on Holy Cross. And then Montana State, they beat Weaver State now. It did not look close at first, but, you know, as I was... As I was, um, you know, going through the scores and stuff like that, you know, it, it seemed like Weaver was able to you know, make it a game, you know, with the field goals and then and, and, and the close plays and stuff like that. But Tommy Malott, you know, over, I mean, he ran for 167 in in a game that was just, oh, it was, it was weird. It was a weird one. You know, weird, weird game in which, you know, the Bobcats were able to advance. And now it's going to be them going up against William and Mary. A, a weird, a, a beautiful type of matchup right there. And Sanford had to survive southeastern Louisiana in overtime. And I mean, my goodness. Just a, just a great performance. Quincy Crittenden, he had to come in. Michael Hears, who got injured again. He injured his wrist at one point in the season that he re-injured it in this game and this went to overtime went to OT in a crazy crazy game you know Whew. like you know if it weren't for you know DeVault Smith the linebacker for Sanford knocking the ball away from Cephas Johnson I think we would have had a crazy an even crazier finish than we already got. Um, so Sanford, they're going to go to the national quarterfinals for the first time in over 30 years to face a familiar name. 
in the North Dakota State Bison who beat up on Montana. I mean, it, it, it was it was 21 to 20 at one point, and then all of a sudden, North Dakota State decided to just 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 run away with it. You know, and again, running backs, you know, have been a key source for the Bison. But then Kobe Johnson, you know, only ran 12 times, but he ran for over 200 yards, including a couple of 70-plus yard TD runs. And the run game for North Dakota State, again, like I said in the preview this morning, powerful, strong, efficient. They ran for over 450 yards, six touchdowns. You know, Tamaric Williams also. All, just all over, you know, running, running wild on the Grizz, running wild on Sacramento State, the number two seed. They survived an upset bid from Richmond. You know, they they finally got their first playoff win. You know, Asher O'Hara, you know, and and Jake Dunaway. They were able to. Get, they were able to. They were able to get the the points needed. They were able to get the points needed. And again, you know, whew, you know. I mean, I mean, Richmond gave it a fight. Gave it a real good fight. But in the end, Sac State survived. Sac State survived, and that's how it goes. So, in any case. That is the second round. Our quarterfinals are set. The TV times are set as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they should be set um, by now. Um, three of the quarterfinals that I know are going to be televised on big ESPN. Um, so it looks like we're going to have. Yeah, we're going to have three. Friday games had one game on Saturday, which is weird. You know, we're gonna have North Dakota State Samp on Friday night on ESPN two. Sacramento State and Incarnate Word are gonna be on ESPN Plus on a Friday night. Why? And then Montana State will even marry also on Friday night, so we'll have like a we'll have like a little double header of or rather, we'd have to have like a double screen set up for for the UIW Sac State game. It's it's criminal that UIW gets the ESPN Plus treatment. We are robbed of Lindsey Scott on national television. I am not enjoying that at the moment. Uh, but we'll find out, you know, again, you know, which of these eight seeded teams left are going to go to the semifinals as we continue our journey to the FCS championship in Frisco which is a Sunday by the way because the FCS is stupid it should be a Saturday um, but that's neither here nor there I'm not going to complain about it anymore I hope until um, tomorrow morning because I'm gonna, gonna upload these and go to sleep then tomorrow morning Come on back, talk about the NFL. So I just want to talk about the NFL, you know, before the games start on Sunday. So I just want to get it out of the way and not have to worry. So until tomorrow, Big Boy Sports signing out, and I'll see you tomorrow.